Mm. Ryu left, dude. It was not good. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Blue Jays Today, where we always have something to say about the Blue Jays. I'm your host, Nicholas Playlog. And I am your host, Adam Paddle. And today, guys, we're going to be breaking down the last week in baseball, and especially your Toronto Blue Jays. But before we get into all the news, please make sure to subscribe, like, comment. We ask it every time, but if you subscribe, it makes us, it makes our job a lot easier. It makes yeah. it a lot more supportive. Yeah, 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 and as well, guys, this video is brought to you by Manscaped. Mm -hmm. 20% off when you use today Jays as the code, as well as free shipping. So if you're looking to trim down there, it's been a long, long, long lockdown for those in Ontario. You might want to get some Manscaped boys. And yep. as well, Monkey Night Fight, the baseball season's going. Let's get those bets going. Again, today Jays is the code, up to 100% back when you use today Jays. So get those bets going. All right, buddy. Thank you for shouting out all of that stuff. Let's break straight into it, because I'm imagining we probably got something to do with Ryu in the title here. Yeah. Yeah. Probably a lot of y'all guys clicked on, and we yeah. will be getting to that very shortly. But we first will. off, we're just going to talk generalized baseball. Yeah. The A's were on God tier level. They were playing on rookie mode in MLB The Show. Um, we know all about MLB The Show now. Yeah. We have it, and we've been playing it. It's lots of fun. It's we coming, suck. boys. We were um, a little bit bad. We're, we're, it's coming. But uh, but they did they did drop their first game to the uh, Baltimore Orioles yeah. today, uh, which is Sunday. Uh, yeah. John Means pitched a really nice game, uh, but still. I mean, 13 wins. 13 That's wins. a lot of wins. Anyone get any flashbacks from 20 or 2002? Anyone? Anyone? Oakland mm. Athletics flashbacks? I did a little bit, but it stopped at 13. So good for them. This was shocking. They're, well, I'm not shocked that they're first place because you go on a 13-game win streak this early. Of course, you're going to be first place. But the guys in second are Seattle, 13-9. and nine. I see you, Seattle. Mm. I got Ty France in fantasy. I see what he's doing. There? What I is... keep... Keep your eye on Seattle, right, everybody. Right, right. Yeah, well, I'm, I'll be honest. My eye's not going to be on them too hard because I don't think this is a long-term thing, uh, in my opinion. But uh, but somebody who is showing out to be a long-term option is Joe Musgrove on the Padres. It looks like they got an absolute steal with this guy. I think the breakout is real. Uh, I mean, his ERA is 1.04. That's over 26 innings, and he's got 37 Ks to go along with that. So so a lot of good stuff. You throw in a no-no in there as well, and I Jeez. mean, like, you're off to a pretty good freaking start oh, to the season, God. man. Oh, God, yeah. It, it, is it, did, we, did we draft Joe Musgrove? I think we did. The Toronto did Blue Jays. We? I think we did, man. I think we we did. drafted Joe Musgrove. Yeah, and we traded him away. To the Pirates. Let me, let me fact check that, but, like, I'm pretty sure, dude. Dude, the fact that is that we could have had this man, and now he's no longer well, with us. Well, you know what? You're talking about us, dude, but think about how the Pirates feel, okay? Oh, God, Cole, yeah. Glasnow, <laughs> Musgrove. Those are all guys that were on their team at one point or another. If you were to have it, those three right now, yeah. those are arguably, like, you know, some of the best pitchers in the league at dude, this point. It's so. almost like they're kind of reminding me a little bit of the Miami Marlins, where they just seem to just get rid of all their young guys yeah. over year after year. It's kind of like they're the you know? universal farm system for exactly. everybody. Exactly. Right? Like, what is going on? And yes, we did draft Joe Musgrove, 42nd Jeez. overall. Wow. Didn't even know that, oh, man. Oh, boys. But Joe Musgrove, congratulations. If you are a San Diego Padre fan out there, which we know we have a few of them, you guys got you guys got it good. And there, yeah. you Darvish, Snell, and Joe Musgrove. Yeah. Well, and speaking of that. the Padres, let's stick on that train, man, yeah. because uh, I thought something really cool happened in the past couple days. Uh, mm -hmm. Tatis annihilated Bauer. He took him deep. It was, was great. Cool. Uh, and you know, I was never the biggest fan of Bauer. Uh, I thought he was mm -hmm. a little bit of a prick. Mm. But uh, but he did something that I thought was very not prick like, and mm. and and that was afterwards when it came out and it was revealed to him that Tatis had actually done a little little celebratory mm. uh, covering hand his eye over the eye or yeah, something cause, like. Yeah, because in spring training, uh, you know, Trevor Bauer's feeling cocky and like covering one eye and like striking a guy out. So Tatis, bam, one eye, and then the second time he hit the homer oh. off him, he did it again. Right. And the bench, the bench all did it too. Yeah, okay. But Joe, but what did Bauer but say? Bauer said, hey man, like, 
you took me deep. Like, do it. I'm not offended, right? And, yeah. and I'm, you know, that's not word for word. But uh, realistically, like, I love that take. I think that Bauer knows that he does the same thing when he's dicing people. Yep. And he said, you know, hey, we're both competitors. You're going to get me sometimes. I'm going to get you sometimes. And that's how the sport goes, right? Yeah. So I love that he has that mentality and he can take that like an adult instead of pegging somebody me with too. a pitch. I agree. And like literally word for word, he said, I like it. And he said, I think it's pretty soft. And this filling in for my words, when people react negatively to that sort of celebration mm -hmm. and throw at people. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad that that shit is starting to move forward. This feels like the first year where we all have recognized that the old unwritten rules of baseball need to get the hell out of baseball yeah. because this is the new era of baseball, everybody. Fuck the old ways. And let's celebrate. And my thing too is, if you're gonna be a sore winner, which Bauer one thousand percent is, then don't be a sore loser. You know, you also you got to be able to take the punches and deliver them as yeah. well. So I'm really yeah. happy that that he did that and and uh, wasn't a prick about it. Yeah. So that's yeah. really cool. Um, all right, enough screwing around. Mm. Ryu left, dude. It was not good. It was not okay. I when we like that's not okay at all, man. No. Because we've said it many a time that if Ryu goes, no, that's that. I'm, I'm, that's that. Okay, just that's to, that. We watch the game. We were live for the game. We go live every Sunday, and it looked very minor. the The reports came out after. It is a right glute strain. Yeah. So it was but. Uh huh. Which doesn't seem too doesn't bad. seem bad. You never freaking know. They might, and they will, if it is a lot worse, they're going to play it down. Yeah. They're going to go, oh, we're just going to skip a start, see how he's feeling. Oh, looks like he's getting a lot, a little feeling not good. We're going to push it back another week and another uh -huh. week. But point being, let's we're looking, we're talking about the hypothetical what if scenario. What if Ryu is done yeah, yeah. for okay. a long and, time? And, and, you know what, I, I don't want to you know be on this for too long no 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 scares the fuck out of me yeah right but, but uh but i also do want a, a positive thing is okay how many times do you hear somebody going out for like a torn acl or something like that like a fair bit a fair bit i don't ACL, know if yeah. i have ever heard anybody go out for a <laughs> torn ass so <laughs> yes i you and know I, and it, let's be honest like i i, I got, when i run my ass hurts the next day it just does. Yeah, I think My I think hurts. you pulled something. I think it'll be okay. Yeah. But on the but. off chance that it's not, yeah, we're basically fucked in right. my opinion because right. uh, you know, like we're just not built no. to lose those no. innings. No, like our literal pitching staff is all brought together by Ryu. Yes. And if we cut off Ryu, our staff's in shambles and we're falling all over yeah. place. We're like, what? Now, now, like I was literally, we were literally saying in the live, I was like, let's, now we got to call up SWR. Yeah. Now we got to start making yeah. some trades because I, we cannot put Roark back in this. No, into this, no, 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 into no. no. And that's, and I really do think that that would happen, man, because the management would freak out and they go, hey, we need some innings. And I guess for a short term solution until we can bring those guys up or until we can trade for somebody you're gonna have to do that but ideally we you know he will be okay and we can't have that happen yes. now the one positive thing is that two of our off-season acquisitions are off to pretty good starts right now yes they are steven matz and robbie ray pat tell us about steven matz and robbie ray Guys, I'll tell you about Stephen Matz and Robbie Ray. Can I just say how refreshing it is to finally have not one, but two guys behind Hunjin Ryu that can actually pitch and not just be solid, but be extremely effective, actually. And I know we can talk small sample size. Matz has only had four starts. Ray's only had three. But this has been carrying over from a really good spring training for both of these guys, and I'm excited to see what these guys can do over the course of a full season. Stephen Matz is currently pitching at an ERA of 2.3, and Robbie Ray is currently at an ERA of 2.6. So this isn't just good numbers, these are really good numbers. These are Hunjin Ryu numbers. So let's talk about what's made these guys so much more successful last year and really reach the potential that the Jays thought they had when they brought them in in trades last year. So starting with Robbie Ray, for him, it's been all about his four-seam fastball. He threw 94 pitches in his last outing, 68 of them were fastballs. That's a ridiculous amount. And he's been extremely effective with it, causing 18 swinging strikes, 11 of them where they aren't even making contact, period. 
His velocity was topping out at about 98 and a half, which is great considering we don't have a lot of our other flamethrowers in the lineup right now. Nate Pearson just had his first, I think, alternate site outing. Wasn't amazing. He's probably going to be slowly coming along. So to have Robbie Ray fill a big hole there is fantastic. This is exactly what we want to see from a guy who's brought in to be this flamethrower to get a lot of strikeouts. Steven Matz, on the other hand, has been completely different. He's been all about the command and control. He has seen a slight uptick in his fastball velocity. He's averaging around 95 miles per hour, where he used to be around 93. But more importantly, he's getting really weak contact. For Steven Matz, it's all about the ground ball rate. Last year, he was measly 36.4%. Horrible. This year, he got that all the way up to 46.7%, which is much, much more in line with what we want to see from Steven Matz. So relying less on the fastball, he's throwing more changeup this year, and what makes a good fastball is a good changeup. So if Steven Matz can carry this further as well and be the number two guy, Robbie Ray can slot into the number three, maybe we'll do okay if Ryu actually has to miss some time. Fingers crossed that he doesn't, but it's good to know that we have a couple of guys who can pick up the slack if worse comes to worse. Thank you, Pat, for that breakdown. Yes, those guys are going to be very, very important. Whether we lose sure. Ryu or we don't lose Ryu, those are going to be important guys for us, especially with the, you know, Ryu, Mats, and and Ray being that three-headed kind of monster That's for us. the idea, man. Hopefully. That's the idea. So, fingers crossed, everybody. Ryu should be all right. Hopefully, by right. the time this video comes out, oh, we yeah. will have already had news. In yeah. fact, there may even be a minute monologue on this channel already. breaking down yeah. exactly what the injury is. So, so, sorry for wasting your time if uh, yeah. you, know, <laughs> you do all that. Um, all right, man. So, uh, I guess that's kind of the Ryu news. Mm -hmm. Let's talk this week, this past week that has happened. We went through three and two that's Good. better than what we expected i think both of us said two and three we did we so did. i mean we took a game that we thought we would lose i'm pretty happy about yeah. that right uh, i mean two off of tampa bay yeah and you I never think, complain when you beat your division rivals two out of three times exactly and i think we said we'd we would we'd lose the series against tampa bay yeah. at one and two which um you know because they had glasnow going we thought that was a for sure l even though we had steven matz mm -hmm. Glasnow, we got to him in the first inning. Dude, giving the up boys four runs. listened to our scouting report. Yeah, they did. Hit they the listened to our scouting report, man. Hit you can hit ball. this guy's fastball, then he's done. He's yep. he's baby food after that, you know. Mm -hmm. But uh, but it, a lot of times it is very hard to hit his freaking fastball. But what we is. did, we so did. we got them. I'm super happy about yeah. that. It still feels though like the offense is cold. It does. It doesn't feel consistent. It feels still, I mean, Vlad did cool off, but it still felt like the Vlad, Bo, and Gritchick show. You know what I right. mean? yeah. And uh, Simeon actually had a good week this week. I believe he hit around 350. So okay. Simeon. Okay. And, and the things to note is the reason why, you know, after we moved Bijou to the top part and Simeon back down, I right. think that gave a lot, took a lot of pressure off Simeon's shoulders. Uh -huh. You don't have to be the man leading this team. Well, I'll be honest, dude. You know? Like, his whole approach wasn't strong striking me as lead off guy right. you know like we weren't right i didn't find that he was like taking pitches or no. doing his scouting report for the team it looked like he wanted to get up there and smack and like yeah. that's totally cool dude but, if you uh, can smack if you can smack you know and it's like i i think that george springer is a bit of a tier ahead exactly in smacking capabilities exactly than uh than simeon yeah so. I, I love simeon in that five six spot you know hell even seven depends if tio sure. gets back and some other people get hot but yeah i love simeon down there because why you know it kind of acts like a tiny leadoff man for that back half of the of the lineup, you know? Think about if we have a full healthy lineup. Who would be hitting behind Simeon? It's going to be like, like Rowdy. Maybe Rowdy, maybe Kirk. Rowdy kind of is batting in that cleanup spot. Maybe Guriel, you Potentially. know? Potentially. Potentially. Depends, depends on how who's getting hot. But either way... He's got five stolen bases this year. Yeah, I mean, so, he's definitely doing that, man. He's providing the power, and he is uh, stealing some bases. So I do like to see that. Although, uh, like, speaking on, like, Bo and stuff, like, he had a rough Tampa Bay series. Like, I think he went, like, 0 for 12 or something. Yeah, he did. He did. Um, and, I mean, Vlad, like, still getting a little bit cool. A little um, cooled off. Still got his walks and two, three, uh, three hits, I believe. Yeah, um, I felt like what really, uh, what's carrying this team right now, shockingly, is the fact that we have the number one ERA in the AL. Yeah. The number one ERA Ooh. in the AL. Who would have freaking thought? Not me, dude. There's no freaking way. And that's all like all pitching, right? I believe that is the case. That's yes. incredible. And I know our bullpen's really up there too as well, but that's incredible. So yeah. you know what? We're we're here talking about like, oh, if, if Rio gets cut off, we're in shambles now. But it's like no, a lot of guys are contributing. Our bullpen is contributing. So somehow they're getting it done. They're getting it done. Is that gonna stay? 
I don't think so. Yeah, I mean, um, that's got to where it comes down you know, to. You know, let's be honest. It's not going to stay there. But, you know, hey, if it falls back down and maybe we're fifth, that's great. But the bat's got to get going. That's got to be our strength. Well, one good thing, one good thing. Is, uh, is the bats should be getting some reinforcements. I don't want to delve, or we delve don't into dive this into too long because we're going to make a whole podcast on this. But T.O. should be back this week, mm-hmm. we hope. And George Springer, the first time that we get to see this man. People are yes. saying potentially Tuesday. Maybe that would be Tuesday. freaking awesome. Oh maybe gosh, Tuesday, maybe. maybe Tuesday, you know? Oh. Um, so uh, we're definitely going to need to be like talking about that mm-hmm. and everything. But uh, that would be massive for yeah, the squad right Agreed. Now. But one outfielder that has earned his spot to stay in that starting lineup that many thought maybe would be squeezed out. And that is our J of the Week. All right, everybody. So the great and most prestigious honor of J of the Week is presented to Randall the Handle Gritchick. Excellent work this week, Randall. You were great in the outfield. You made some solid plays, and you delivered the bops. Atta baby. Three homers, right? Three homers. That's a lot of freaking homers. What's most impressive of me? We had three homers is huge. He also got three walks. Okay. That's good for Randall. Hell yeah. Six RBIs, four runs scored. And let me break you down his slash line a little bit here. A 315 batting average, a 409 on base percentage, 789 slugging, and an OPS of 1.198. That'll do. That'll That's do, buddy. We'll so, do. yeah, honestly, yeah. you know, I know we said Bo Vlad Gritchick story. It was kind of, kind of felt like this was the Gritchick this, week. This you know? is the Gritchick week. And, yeah. like, Gritchick's been hot. He kind of cooled off a little bit last week, but the first two weeks were really, really good for Randall. I'm glad to see that he didn't just continue because we were getting a little bit worried that yeah. maybe Randall would start going back to Randall. Well, like, we've we, seen the yeah, story. Yeah, I mean, like, Randall is kind of like a roller coaster yeah. vibe. There are peaks, there are valleys. You don't know if he's hot or if he's cold sometimes because it's all over the place yeah. but right now to start this year through a uh, little bit more than 20 games yeah. he has been 100 rock solid wherever you know defensively yeah. and offensively i'm, I'm so. very impressed with randall because not only like he, he said he's been playing with a chip on his shoulder this entire season like what he knows Good. he knows he's not he's not a, he's not immune to the conversation of like hey before pre like before the season maybe i get shipped off to another team am i gonna be playing the bench he's earned his spot to play in the lineup Every single day. Yeah, dude. Yeah. I'm not taking this guy out at Hell all. Hell no, man. Like, and, and we even put him into that fourth spot. And we've seen before when Randall gets moved into a spot where you need to be clutch, where people are relying on you. Typically, that's when I start to see him screw up right. and start swinging at garbage. And that yeah. hasn't happened here. He's no. been very patient. And those walks are great to see. So mm. congratulations. Excellent Randall. work, Randall Gritchick. Keep it freaking up. Congratulations. Let's look at the next week, buddy. We yeah. got some harsh competitors, and uh, Ooh, I was looking at the do. schedule following this week, too. It's not getting any easier. No. We are dealing with a lot of tough customers, one of them being Washington. Uh, I think it's confirmed that we will be facing oh. off against Mad Max, yeah. a potential trade target. Potential trade. He's um, going to see us and go, oh, yeah, and he's good. <laughs> yeah, well, that's the thing. we got to smack him around first. Yeah, he's like, we got to deliver the one-two th- punch. Me? I don't want to face these. Exactly, guys. exactly. So we will be yeah. seeing them, and we'll also be seeing the Atlanta Braves. Uh, I mean, they're like, ta- like Acuna, not Tatis, mm. uh, the other one. The other really Acuna <laughs> is incredible right now. I mean, mm. like, he's definitely got to be in the way too early MVP conversation. Yeah. Like, he just looks like a madman at yeah, the plate. Did, so, yeah. absolutely. I mean, it's going to be a tough fight. It's going to be a tough road this week. It is. What are you kind of projecting here for the boys? Boys. I'm going to do the exact same projection as I did last week. Me too. Me too. We're going to go two and three. Me too. We're going to take one against the Washington Nationals, not the one where we face Scherzer, because yeah, we have a question <laughs> mark versus Scherzer, so yeah. that's an L. Yeah. But we do know we have Steven Matz versus, I am gonna. I guess it's Fetty. Fetty. Uh, he is a 5-plus ERA, and Matz is stellar, so we're definitely going to take that one okay. from Washington. Okay, yeah, for sure. I, I agree with you, man. Yeah, and then Atlanta series, they haven't announced their rotation, but based on what they've been doing, the way they've been laying out the rotation this last week, I'm going to project it's going to be Smiley, Morton, and Eon Anderson. Mm. So, and we, all I know is I could speculate is that we're going to have Ray, and we don't know if we're going to have well, Ryu. Well, that's the thing, so, dude. We're not going to have Matt, and I, like, again, we don't we know about no anything idea. to do with Ryu. There's a lot of off days in between here, mm-hmm. but it's also, like, they like to be very cautious with this mm-hmm. man, so it's very possible that we don't have him. Mm-hmm. So then we're looking at Ray, 
probably a bullpen, bullpen day. day. And then, like, no, I don't know. I don't know. Boy, I actually have no stripling, idea. Stripling, we might, Roark, we no might, idea. We might get, it, it might honestly be a Roark, honestly. Could be, dude. Like, it we're might just, be a we're, They're forcing our hand. They Injuries have to. are forcing our hand yeah. right now, you know? It's, Agreed. It's tough so, to do anything about it, but. Either way, it's like, we may win the bullpen day. We may win the Ray day. Yeah. That other day, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, it exactly. Could be so I, we got to go two and th- uh, two and three for this week. Two and three. It's just like, these teams are pretty good, man. And yeah. uh, and I really wish that we weren't up against Scherzer. If it wasn't Scherzer, I would say I that we, we could. could potentially sweep these guys because yeah. they have been cold. Some of their other pitchers have not been pitching up to their potential. Yeah. It just so happens that we are dealing with one of the best and craziest people in the sport. So yeah. yeah, it is what it is. It is yeah. what it is, man. So yeah, two and three for the Toronto Blue Jays. That would bring us to a twelve and fourteen record going into the ah, month. Damn of it, May. that's ugly, man. I kind of. Uh, we could just go sucks. three and two, then we could be five hundred again. Exactly. God but damn it, eh? it may or may not happen. Who knows? Maybe George Springer and Tio come back and just bleh, just light it up. Blow up light it up. Scherzer. We're like, oh my god. Yeah, you know yeah. who knows. Well, we blew up clouds now. I mean, exactly. It could it happen, could happen it could boys happen. and girls. It could happen. Hey, if we go 500 in the month of April, good stuff. Yeah, I'm feeling pretty good about good it. With stuff, all the especially with all the injuries. I'm feeling pretty good about it, dude. Absolutely. I'm going to spin this freaking wheel. Guys, you want to spin the wheel? It's time, I think, that we spin the wheel. The spinning fortune, baseball, colorful, future determining, stat analyzing, and uh, it's a wheel that we spin every week. All right, guys. So as you know, this is the time for the wheel of blah, 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 blah. You got the stats from last week, Adam? Yes, I do. And Nick, I handled you this week on your week, unfortunately for you. But fortunately for me, Jay Killer, I got to Rose Arena. Yeah. He had good. He had a good series against the Jays, hitting a home run, a three-run home run. And for base on balls, though, you got me. It was close. Vladdy with five walks. Biggio with four walks. Yeah, very no, close. Very tight, dude. Very tight. Very tight. And RBIs, this was also very tight. Bo Bichette with two. And Vladdy with one. Yeah, man. I really thought I had you with that one. Yeah. But I guess, like, Vlad, like, he definitely did better than Bo this week. It yeah. just so happened that we were not getting runners in scoring position. Yeah. I don't know. Hey, it just... <laughs> They didn't fall. They didn't. Hey, Vlad got five walks. That's he incredible. got five walks, so. so that's pretty damn good. You know, yeah. I, I certainly can't complain, but yeah. uh, would have liked to get two off you there. Yeah, so wanna... It is what it is. I believe it is, what, five, five to, to four? four I'm now. behind by one? Yep. And okay. The, and okay. this is my week, so this, this is, is my chance. Week. This is your week. Ahead. Yeah, you could definitely get a strong lead here. All right. Can I spin? Let's go for it. Let's All right, it. buddy. Let's spin. Let's see what's going it. on here. Come on. Make it something that I can win. We go. Make it something that I can win. No more bonus players, please. Yeah, I'm done, <laughs> done with the bonus players. Oh, here it comes. Oh, my God. It's literally a bonus player. Bonus player. All right, so I, I get feel to like pick. I waited there. <laughs> <laughs> Why do we always get bonus players? I don't know, man. It's like we put it as, it's like, eh, it could yeah, happen. Yeah, it could no, happen. Every now it's week. happening every goddamn week. All right, all right. All right. So this category I got to pick. This is what I got to pick. Okay. But I get to pick first, right? That's Unless how I choose. No, no, I, I get to choose whether it's me or you go first. All right. All right. And it's hits. Okay. So, uh, you know what? You could go first. I'm going to let you go first with this one. On this one? Yeah. Go ahead. Uh, Hits for the Jays. Um, who do I think is going to do really well? I mean, Vlad's still super hot. Kind of don't really want to let him follow you, but at the same time, Grichik's doing super good too. Yeah, that's a tough one. Yeah, I'm going to take Grichik. Take Grichik. Take Grichik. All right, so then in that case, Sending starting to heat up in that six hall, but I can't trust him. <laughs> but you know what? I am going to go. Oh, this one's tough. I'm going to go Vlad, and I am going to go Simeon. I'm going to go Vlad and Simeon for hits. Okay. All right. Let's okay. see what we got. Next category. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Now I'm picking first every time. Yes, you are. Uh, worst J. Okay, this is a new one. Um, the worst J. I mean, I think it's pretty goddamn easy. I think easy, it's dude. actually, yeah. It's it's gonna be Danny Jansen. Yeah, Danny Jansen probably. <laughs> um, although I'm gonna go with a different player here, different option. Uh, I think Robbie Ray's gonna get blown up. Okay. Robbie okay. Ray. Okay. Okay. So in that case, because they're batter pitcher, we'll leave it up to 
our arbitrator. Yes, Pat yes. Depending on, uh, on on what happens. Who for has sure. the worst week? All right. Final one. What do we got? Final one. What do we have? Base on balls, batters again. Okay. Walks. Vlad. Yeah. Got to go with my boy um, Vlad. Who do I think is going to take the most walks right now? Definitely not Bichette. I mean, Vigio is a good option for mm -hmm. sure. And he's leading off. He might not be leading off the whole time. Sprinter comes back. Um, Stop. I guess I gotta go Biggio yeah, again. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I kind of probably have to I'd, go Biggio. I'd go Biggio you know? too, you know? Yeah, for sure. For sure. Okay. All right, guys. So that's what we got for this week. We'll see what happens. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. So that is the Blue Jays Today Show. If you guys enjoyed, let us know in the comments down below. What do you think is going to be Jay of the Week this week? And is Ryu going to be okay? Let us know. Hope so, man. Fingers crossed. You can also check us out on Spotify, Breaker, Anchor, Radio Public, and Google Podcasts. Also, please make sure to like and subscribe if you do enjoy the content. Today, Jays is the code for Manscaped and for Monkey Knife Fight. Use it. You get some discounts and promotions yeah, and stuff. And, yeah. Uh, $3 a month to become a Patreon member. You get to call in. Uh, shout out to all of our Patreons. Thank you so much for uh, supporting the show and supporting the channel, man. Yeah, exactly. We are very close. If we're not already there to 1800 we hope we get there. So if you're watching and you're still watching and you're new, hit that subscribe button. Guys, thank you so much for watching. And go Jays, go.